Welcome to another episode of the Transport Chat. We're back. This time we're going to talk about two sectors which are going to be really changed by the coronavirus in the years to come. First of those is the car industry. There's $1.3 trillion invested in things like factories, production lines, models, everything built on producing mostly fossil fuel cars. Car transport is down. Car transport sales are down because of the coronavirus. There's going to be huge changes. Now, how does the industry deal with that? They either try and fight against it, in which case it's probably going to be fighting a losing battle because regulations like emission standards, car scrappage schemes, incentives for electric vehicles are all going to be fighting against them as well. Stale demand was already supposed to be down before this virus even hit. So it's a present reality that the industry is going to have to come to terms with. So they should probably embrace it. The likes of Volkswagen are pressing ahead with plans to launch its ID3, its people car, electric car for the masses in the summer. Whether or not that's going to be pushed back by the coronavirus remains to be seen. Uh, the big German car makers want more green incentives from the government, from the EU, from whoever, to churn out more electric cars so more people buy them. But there's also consumer demand. The likes of Brussels, Milan, other cities are all pedestrianising their centres or making them more people friendly, more anti-car, if you will. Um, so consumer habits are going to change. There are probably going to be, there's going to be a lower demand for cars. That's probably just going to be our new reality. So what do they do? They probably should embrace it. Consolidate. The likes of Fiat Chrysler and the PSA Group, the Peugeot Group, are already pressing ahead with their merger. Uh, Fiat Chrysler wants to access smaller cars that Peugeot specialise in. Peugeot wants to, access, wants to access the US market, which Fiat Chrysler can offer it. And as previous crises have shown us in the aftermath, smaller cars are normally king. So that's the kind of thing we're probably going to see, this patchwork of cars, Car makers, legacy car makers coming together more. Maybe some will be killed off. Uh, disruptors like Tesla are already doing well out of it. Their shares are up 64% despite the crisis. They're looking for a new base in Europe. They've settled on Germany. That's pushing ahead. So will the car makers embrace the change? Push for things like electric car infrastructure in order to push demand? It's up to them. Like I said, there's, a, there's more than a trillion dollars around the world invested in this stuff. Will the fossil fuel car go the way of the dinosaur? I mean, probably. That's the way we're looking at it. And speaking of consolidation, the second sector, aviation. The US has four major airlines that serve an entire continent, if you will. Europe's got more than 20, and uh, they are, despite the best intentions of governments giving them billions of euros, like Air France and KLM on Friday, you can tune into the site to see that story, State aid is probably going to be, as Air Baltic CEO said, a stay of execution for many carriers. They just won't be able to survive this. The likes of Air Malta was already struggling beforehand. It's just a passion project for the government. That's just the reality of it. Um, so that will probably mean there's consolidation for the airlines as well. What it means for the future of aviation is slightly less certain. Uh, Airbus, Europe's big aerospace giant, was going to show us how electric power could power aviation in the future, but its demonstrated project was cancelled on Saturday, mainly because of the coronavirus, which means that they're going to probably double down on things like more efficient planes, replacing kerosene with more sustainable fuel, cleaner burning fuel. But in terms of a full revolution of the way we take to the skies with electric power or maybe something like hydrogen, which is going to cost a lot of money, um, that's probably going to be delayed, cancelled, never see the light of day. So the coronavirus's impact is by no certain means short or medium term. This is a long-term disrupting factor. Um, and I think that most sectors are probably aware of that, and they're probably going to be changing their business plans, their future courses over the next few months to reflect that reality. And it's not just for, it's not uh, uh, limited to the car and aviation sector by no means. The likes of railways, shipping, the space sector, they're all going to have some sort of change of tack when it comes to the next decade. And that's it for now. Tune in next week. Subscribe to the newsletter if you haven't already. Keep watching the site for more transport stories, more climate stories. There will be plenty. And I'll see you next time. Ciao.